and SARS in retrospect, a government seemingly in competition with our youth. There is a saying that goes as thus, show me the heroes that the youths of your country look up to, and I will tell you the future of your country. The big question is, who are these heroes? The politicians, the public servants, professionals, public figures, or even celebrities? It is the responsibility of those in authority and even the senior citizens to be conscious about their legacies and its effects on the youths. Franklin D. Roosevelt, the 32nd President of the United States, once said, we cannot always build future for our youths, but we can build our youths for the future. Now, what kind of future is Nigeria preparing for her youths? Or how can Nigerian youths be prepared for the future, globally speaking? We're in the era of digital economy, where technology is innovated by the effervescence and intellectual programs of majorly the youths. Would the government provide an enabling environment for the Nigerian youth to thrive in this digital economy? Of course they could, but only if they could listen to the youth before scolding them and telling them to behave themselves. Exactly one year since the NSAS protests that ended in chaos and bloodshed, which by the way, some of those in authority have constantly refused to take responsibility and find it convenient to live in denial thereby resorting to the absolute disregard of the Nigerian youths, not to talk of the human rights violation. A nation must learn to listen to her youth for her future sake. The NSAS protest was and still is beyond police brutality, but also about canvassing for good governance with policies that would enable the Nigerian youth to realize their full potentials. Some of these lessons to be noted are providing an enabling environment for the Nigerian youth to thrive in the digital global economy through policies that encourages entrepreneurship, adequate proper education, innovation, and inclusion, enhancing security and proper training of security forces for healthy interaction with the youth where necessary, especially the police, willingness of constituted authorities to listen and work with the youth towards national development. In conclusion, the government should always do everything necessary to harness the potential of the youths positively for sustainable social economic growth and development. Think about this quote. If we can save the youth energy from being dissipated by negative and fisparous tendencies, if we can harness it for the right purposes, if we are honest towards our youths, if we can give them proper orientation, I'm sure they would bring about universal harmony and establish global peace. Hmm. <sighs> Felix for president. <laughs> <laughs> he went like political on me, but what Felix said was very true. Even when I passed by the toll gate today, I saw all the ammo tanks there. I'm like, they were still expecting the boys to, or the youth, to mm. come back and start working. So the NSAS thing told me a lot of things about Nigerian youth. He told me that the youth have power mm -hmm. to change things. Single-handedly, they shook the nation. So they can do so much more. I know we can sit back, the government should empower us, the government should do stuff. Mm -hmm. But the answer shows clearly that if we try, if we start, we can go very far. I'm sorry to use the word, without the government. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the youth should actually give up and just use the answers as a means of saying that they tried. They can actually regroup and do something else. Like the Twitter thing you were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can form their own social network. Not only will there be a market for it after Twitter mm -hmm. is down, they will also earn from it. Mm -hmm. And they will not also share or exhibit their power on those platforms. The youth should not go to sleep mm -hmm. because the government is trying to put them. And, and for me, I, when I'm when I, hearing you speak, I just said to myself, okay, this is one of the pieces you present at the UN Extraordinary Meeting. But for me... I, I took a bit of a different line, and the reason is simple. You see, whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, governments with an S in Nigeria have been feeling, mm -hmm. are feeling, and will feel. And I'll tell you the simple reason. Over the years, I mean, I look back at Nigeria's history, Nigeria has been nose diving since the 80s. 
No, no, since it began. I even want to bring you. I even want to bring you. Let's be nice. Since the 80s. Since the 80s, you know. I, I, was, I interviewed uh, Professor Pati Tomi on a program some weeks ago, and, and he made a statement. He said when he came back to Nigeria in the early 80s, after getting his PhD, he was so Nigerian, he wanted to come back home and work. At, as at that time, the cost of uh, oil went up to $40 per barrel. While other people all over the world were investing, Nigerians were doing parties and closing down roads. <laughs> so we have the we have the we're structural. Rising of death. We're rising uh -huh. of death for you. Dubai, exactly. For UAE. For you and all that. So we were doing all that at that time. And tell me, it's, since then we've been losing industries were closing down. So many things were closing down. Even in the Jonathan and Rabbi, we said things were okay. It's because we were being mediocre. Mm -hmm. Things were not the best. Mm -hmm. Oil prices came up. Okay, so what? If, I, I always asked back then, okay, so what really is Nigeria doing to improve the economy? What have we done? Okay, what happened? Were industries set up? Were, were we having, were scientists developing things? Were service uh, industry uh, sector growing? What really grew? So what I'm saying is this, right? In, governments have been failing. And we as a people too, we're failing in the sense that we should by now have known that governments are failing. And they might continue to fail. I said, when I said they will continue to fail, I saw the look on your face. But they might it's continue to fail. It's not a portion of Jesus' thing. <laughs> but one thing we need to do, which is where I'm going, is that we need to start taking very calculated conscious. steps and be conscious of the fact that we don't, excuse me to say, we don't, I'm telling you a line, so she's the one that said a government, we don't have a government. <laughs> and it's not just that, it started from the 90s when we started producing power for us, so buying generators, doing our yeah, own. Yeah, exactly. We each our own municipality. Okay. Yes, that's, that's, and, and I think what Kayade mm. is touching on is we agree. We have to while fighting for governments exactly. to do what they're meant to do, we have to kind of see the reality of on ground and accept that they're not going to do anything. That's With a mind that you're still going to be pushing them, harassing them to do their job. But if you have charge. that mindset that, oh boy, these people are not going to do anything, mm -hmm. what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. And that's part of the, the I'm, I was quite frustrated because I became a victim as, of the um, censoring, of Instagram censoring. Yeah, your, um, exactly. Um, post. Our post yesterday because it was the one year anniversary of NSARS and my post got censored and I am absolutely livid about it because it didn't go against the guidelines. And what I was trying to explain to people in the NSARS movement, which I include myself, is it's all about the, the, the basic human rights of individuals, right? Every single person has a, a basic human rights. And these are the same things that we in the special needs community are fighting for. Exactly. But we do it every day of each year. We do it every day. It's not a part-time thing. It's not an annual thing. It's an everyday like thing. Yeah. And that's why we're able to have um, examples and structures and give people tools to work with. And that's where I think the youth are failing themselves, yeah. is that you actually need to have stuff to implement and people can do on a daily basis yeah. to, sh to shift the needle. West well, side. the thing is, you all have, your, your, your ideas are valid, but let me, let me just point in here. Let me paraphrase Fela here. He said yeah. something that individual success, when a nation is failing, is almost futile. Whether you like it or not, we need ourselves. The government needs us. We need the government. I disagree 100%. I disagree 100%. I'm just going to give you one example. is carrying Nigeria now on the show. I disagree. But I know, let, let's just move on. <laughs> the success is not, very, is not complete. But the truth Nigeria is, we should take responsibility. Nigeria government is failing. And each one of us are, are carrying 10 to 12 people along. Every single Nigerian is taking care of 10 to 12 mm -hmm. people. Nigerian government is failing. We are the ones doing the work. Exactly. Let's accept it and do what needs to be done. Well said. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone will take Sorry, responsibility where necessary. Upness <laughs> is Juliet after the break. <laughs>